G'day there, thanks for coming to my channel. Please let me just take a moment to thank the people that are responsible for this channel even existing, my patrons. These guys do more for me than I can ever put into words. Thank you all so, 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 so much. Man, I cannot believe just how big this screen is getting now. It just totally blows my mind. You guys are nuts, you're insane, and I love you all. Anyway, it's time for the video, so I hope you enjoy. Hello! Welcome to this bottle episode, a follow-up from my one about shirts, how to get all other kinds of merch made. Obviously I can't cover every type of merch in existence in this video, but I will cover the ones that I do tend to see the most. One thing that I've had a lot of requests to cover is enamel pins. These are decorative pins that first start as a metal mold, then all the little empty spaces are filled with their respectively coloured enamel paints, giving it that lovely fully coloured look with a shiny metal finish. Pins have completely taken over the furry fandom lately, especially since Persona pins came into the scene. Making them yourself DIY is possible, but it, it's an extremely tedious process that is extremely difficult to get looking professional. I've linked some videos in the description on how to do DIY enamel pins, so go check that out if that's something you might be interested in. I find the most effective way is to have them done through a company. There's two styles of enamel pins. You've got soft enamel, and you've got hard enamel. Soft enamel has that sort of sunken and debossed look while also giving the pin some texture. And then hard enamel is completely flat and flush. You'll need to keep this enamel paint in mind when making your designs as well. Being a paint, it can have some trouble getting into the itty bitty tiny little spaces and tight corners, so if your design has lots of those, you could have a higher frequency of misprints. But that also depends with what sort of company you go, usually the ones that are more expensive will have a higher level of quality control. Enamel paint is also limited to Pantone colours which is basically just the industrially accepted set of colours that can be printed and painted across multiple different platforms quite consistently. Have you ever like eye dropped a colour in Photoshop and then you see that little exclamation mark underneath the colour that you've selected? That means that your colour is not Pantone friendly and it could change dramatically when you try to bring it into the real world. Then if you click on it, it will change your colour to the closest Pantone match. If you don't use Photoshop, uh, I've linked a website in the description that will let you upload an image, eye drop the colours, and it will give you the hex code for the closest Pantone match. The price of getting your pins made can also go up per colour sometimes, but it usually doesn't go too crazy until you start going over five colours. Once you've got your design ready to go, it's time to go find a company to go make them. Like most production companies, there will have to be a minimum order, you can't just order one pin, but the price per pin does go down with the more you do. I really wanted to see how much prices would change from company to company, so I made my very own pin design. I took this design and gave it to a whole bunch of companies that I found through Googling and asked them to give me a quote. I asked for 100 pins with a black nickel plating, hard enamel, at 1 inch tall. The following quotes are in US dollars, don't include shipping, but do include the initial setup fee. There will always be a setup fee because they need to make the mold to keep on stamping out your pins, so the first order is always going to be a little bit more pricey, but if you want to get more pins down the track later, then they will be a bit cheaper. So, we had the studio.com who quoted me $301.88, so about $3.02 per pin. Madebycooper.com gave me $257, which is about $2.57 per pin. Pinmart.com with $276, so $2.76 per pin. Thepinfactory.com.au gave me $323.24, so about $3.20 per pin. Pinsource.co.nz gave me $260.53, so about $2.60 per pin. Pincrafters.com gave me $350, so $3.50 per pin. Metro Pins with $309, $3.09 per pin. And finally, wizardpins.com gave me $280 at $2.80 per pin. So as you can see, there was a lot of variation in prices just from these eight companies. And there are even more out there just waiting to be found by you, so you absolutely want to get a bunch of quotes before choosing your company. This really goes for any production company, not just the pin ones. It is an investment at first, but pins can be sold for anywhere from 10 to 30 bucks pretty easily, so you can make a fair bit back if you have an awesome design and a good place to sell them. The next merch type that I've seen on the rise lately is acrylic keychains. These are surprisingly durable, features your artwork in its full coloured glory, can be double-sided, and even have a holographic finish if you want. I haven't been able to find any DIY ways of making these yourself, and when I was looking for companies, pretty much all of them were from DHgate, AliExpress, and Alibaba, which are all Chinese production websites. They're usually okay, but definitely do your research. See how long they've been on the website for, and see if there are any previous customer reviews. 
Since I got a bit stuck here, I turned to Twitter for help and thank you guys so much. Zephora Werebear let me know the company that they go through on Alibaba and they've had some really good results. I've linked it for you in the description below if you want to get some done yourself. The other website you guys showed me was Zap Creatives and I was definitely impressed by the amount of stuff they offered. It looks like a really good site just to have like lots of different types of things all made at once. I really love those little acrylic standees, those are so cute. So definitely go check that out as well. Going a bit more traditional, but still widely popular, we have good old buttons. You can find a plethora of button making companies on the very first page of Google, but they're also pretty easy to make yourself if you invest in a button press. They're anywhere from 50 to 200 bucks, depending on the brand and what size you want, where you get them from. But after that, you can make them for a pretty low production cost. You just gotta buy all the little metal backings and the plastic covers, and then you make your artwork, print it out, cut it out in a circle, put it in the middle, Squish down on your button maker, and ta-da! Button! I especially love Burabido's buttons. What he does when he comes to cons, he actually brings his printer and his button maker. So if there's like a con meme that's been created, the next day he will be selling buttons of it. It's amazing. He's so fast on it. Speaking of classics, another great merch idea is tails and ears. These ones you will have to make yourself, I'm afraid. But with enough practice, you should be able to make them like new tomorrow. I have linked a bunch of tutorials in the description below if you would like to learn. Be sure to test the durability of your materials if you're using something that isn't widely used for fursuit making. A cute idea is to make a little adoptable character to sell with your tails and ears as well. That way your buyer gets a really sweet character that they can invest in along with their new accessories. Lanyards are a really fun one that I'm starting to see a lot more of lately. Now you can make these pretty easily yourself, but you're limited to the materials that you're able to find online or in craft stores. For a touch of customization, you can invest in an embroidery machine and then embroider your lanyards. This was the style of the very first coin lanyard I ever had, and it has served me very, very well. I still love it to bits. Once again, got some DIY tutorials in the description for you. If you want to design your own pattern, then it's printing company time. Most all over prints of lanyards will be done via dye sublimation, which we got to learn all about in the last bottle episode. If you're having trouble getting your artwork arranged for lanyards, uh, most websites will actually offer consultants and graphic designers to help you get everything together in a way that's going to look awesome on a lanyard. Each company can operate a little differently from the last, so be sure to check and see how you need to have your artwork arranged for print. There is a huge range of extras you can get with lanyards as well. So you've got all the different coloured clips, all the different types of clips, uh, the safety release on the back, which I'd highly recommend for furries because that's really good for fursuiters, and so much more. Lastly, but certainly not leastly, and definitely one of my favourites, are stickers. I could never, ever, ever, ever get enough of stickers. Ah. Especially the holographic kind, just, just take my money, just, just take it. There are a few ways to make them yourself, and a few different types that you can get through companies. To make them yourself, you first got to work out whether you want to do just single stickers, or a whole sticker sheet. I find singles are a lot easier. I've linked some tutorials for you in the description below, but I can actually talk about this one a lot more because I've done it myself. After looking up a huge range of tutorials, what I did was I went down to my local office supply joint and got one of those like printable sticker sheets. I arranged my artwork digitally, printed it all out, but before cutting out each sticker, I laminated the whole thing. Because turns out when you do this, your stickers become a lot more weatherproof. Kiva kept one on the back of her phone and it lasted her like six months before it just got too ratty. Sticker paper is usually pretty flimsy and temperamental, but once you laminate it, you can create some really solid stickers. If you wanted to make a sticker sheet where they're all nice and kiss cut, uh, then you can get a gyro cutter and slowly cut around them all. Printing companies will offer a lot of variety, so definitely still go have a look. Die cut stickers and kiss cut sticker sheets are probably what you're going to want to look for. Die cut refers to a sticker that's just by itself, but it's all cut out nicely around the shape of your artwork. And a kiss cut sheet has multiple different stickers on it ready for your buyer to use, and they're all very nicely cut around the artwork. You will also need to decide what material you want your stickers printed on. Like paper. Paper will be nice and cheap, but it's not going to be very durable and weatherproof. And then you've got vinyl, which will be a little bit more expensive, but those stickers will literally last years. Now there's one last thing I would like to talk about that applies to anything you get done through a printing company. The majority of the time, these companies are going to either want your artwork in a ridiculously high resolution, I'm talking like 5,000 pixels and up, or they will want your artwork as a vector. When it comes to digital images, there are two categories that every single fire type fall into, vector and raster. A raster is an image like your PNGs, your JPEGs, and your GIFs. These are all a set resolution, so when you zoom in really far, or blow them up really big, you can start to see each individual little pixel. The, the quality just really rapidly diminishes. 
and vector is a file like an AI, an SVG, or a PDF. Images with these files are not bound to pixels, so they won't lose their quality no matter how big you make them or how far you zoom in. They can comfortably use your artwork no matter what they have to do, no matter how big, no matter how small, it will always be at 100% quality. If you don't have much experience working with vectors, I highly, 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 highly recommend a program called Vector Magic. What it does is it lets you import any raster type image and you press a button and it becomes a vector. It's so cool. You can use it free with some limitations and it is a little bit on the pricier side to buy, but I honestly think it is absolutely worth it if you're going to be printing a lot of merch. It can go a little bit funky when it's really high detail stuff, but it certainly beats redrawing it from scratch in a vector program. I use it almost daily. It's, it's really great being able to draw in raster like I'm comfortable with, and then if I want a vector, I just pop it in, press the button, vector. Hashtag not sponsored. It's just a really, really, really good program. Get it. All right, and that about wraps up this bottle episode. Uh, let me know in the comments if there's any other kind of merch I didn't cover that you want to know about. Otherwise, let me know if this video has got you thinking. Are you going to create something new? Let me know. I wish all you artists and entrepreneurs the best of luck. And if you're not one of those, I still appreciate you coming to my video. So the best of luck to you too. I'll see you next time. Bye!